All right, Natalie, thank you so much for being the first ever guest that we've had in the Women's Transformation Group. I'm yeah. super pumped to have you. So the intro that I gave our community is that we were going to be talking all things mental health. So there's a few questions I want to ask you, a few questions specific to mental health that we'll dive into. Prior to that, I want to hear a little bit more about your background, which I obviously know, but just to give context for all of our members, I want to hear a bit more about what you specifically do, how you help women with mental health, and kind of your background leading up to it, which I would love if you would start with your athletic background. You could start there and kind of fast forward to that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I was a gymnast growing up and through college. I was in a full family of gymnasts. Both my parents are my coaches. I'm one of four siblings. We were all gymnasts. Um, both my parents did gymnastics. Yeah. So we were the gymnast family. And we had a, um, my parents owned a gymnastics gym in town. Oh, I don't know that, okay. Who we were, what we were about. It was gymnastics, 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 gymnastics. Yeah. So I was born into the sport and you know, that was my identity. So I, I didn't think of anything else. I'm going to college for gymnastics. That's it. So went to college for gymnastics. It was amazing. National championships, um, all Americans. Like it was the most amazing time of my life, of my career. And so I, gymnastics was my identity. And as soon as I was done with gymnastics, uh, when I graduated college, it was this moment of, Oh my God, I'm free. I'm free. Like I can go do whatever I want at whatever time I want. I can eat what I want. I can drink what I want. I can hang out whenever I want. Like I'm not attached to this thing anymore. So then I started getting into the downward spiral of eating shit, drinking shit, smoking shit, like doing all the nasty things to my body. Sure. And I it started to affect me mentally. So I fell into a deep depression I, that I didn't know I was in until like two years out. So I fell into that. Um, I had these crazy stomach pains that I've had during gymnastics as well, but I just kind of chalked it up to, uh, it's gymnastics, you know, it's just pain in my stomach, whatever. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> Yeah, like I just worked my abs out a little too much. Yeah, so, that's it. Yeah. But this is this pain was to where I, I couldn't lay on my back because this, this stomach pain was hurting so bad. Throughout my childhood, I got migraine after migraine after migraine. So stress, the worry wart person was me. That's who I was from like age five with all the migraines that I got. Um, so all this stuff started coming out after gymnastics of, and, and I had no idea what gymnastics actually really did for me. So I found myself really looking in the mirror being like, who the hell are you? Who, who are you without gymnastics? What do you, what are you here to do on this earth? Like really deep thoughts that scared me. They're really, really scared and like shook me to my core. And I was like, who is this person? Like, this isn't me. I'm the happy go lucky. Like super energetic as you can see me now <laughs> <Big time. laughs> and I wasn't like that and it, and it was it was scaring me so I found ways to help myself get back to myself to recreate to reinvent myself I, I went to therapy I went to doctors for the body pains that were um what's the word like there was there was nothing wrong with me sure yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about something wrong with me because yeah. I, I felt it you know, so the unexplainable body pains, um, went to body workers, nutritionists, um, mentors, coaches, really helped me find me again. Sure. I thought that's just who I was going to be for the rest of my life. That depressed, anxious, not happy-go-lucky girl anymore. And, and then you start putting on the mask. I'm pretending. Of course. And I'm okay. <laughs> but deep down, I hate myself. Yeah. And I see what I'm doing with my life. So now I'm an identity coach and I help women overcome that identity crisis, overcome that self-critic, self-doubt, that worst enemy that you have in yourself, finally taking off that mask. Because I came to a place where I thought this was going to be it, but now I'm on the other side and I'm out of it and I'm freed. And I just want, I want everyone to feel this because you can and it's real 
and I, and I thought people just faked it, but yeah. now that I'm in it, it's like, it's the most amazing feeling ever. And so that's why sure. I what I do is because of what I went through. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I thought was so relevant, obviously knowing you for the last several months now about your story is although the initial kind of identity crisis came from your athletic background and then that career ending, I think that identity crisis is so relevant to also non-athletes. Could be a mom whose kids just graduated college and move out and they've been a mother, 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 and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I have, yeah, like, uh, I, I have time. Or it could be somebody who just graduated college and now they earn a career and they were, you know, college student and now they're full-time working. That's a new identity. It could be somebody who has new health habits and like they're not the same unhealthy person they were. So I feel like your identity crisis started out specifically as an athlete, but I'm sure you see it all the time with the women you work with. It kind of like renders itself in a lot of different ways where we have, we struggle to like transition to like a new and improved self because we do have a lot of that negative self-talk and a lot of those self limiting beliefs. Just kind of one of the first questions I wanted to ask you about um, so it was an Instagram post you put up last week that was about the idea of feelings versus identity, which we've touched upon a little bit in our group, but I was hoping you could dive a lot deeper. Obviously, some common examples of this being I'm a worry ward, I'm a stressor, I'm X, I'm Y, I'm Z. So I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about kind of how to recognize when you are using that language, some examples of it, and then some action steps with breaking out of that to separate, okay, I am not this person, this is what I'm feeling. So if you could... Tell us a little bit more about that. That would be awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, separating, I mean, the identity, it, it's you. It's who you are. It's who you've always been. And what we think, what I used to think is my identity is one thing. You can't change it no matter what. It's set in stone. I was born this way. But as soon as you... So I don't know if you've talked about or if anybody's heard about the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. We have not talked about it. So that'd be great if you could go into that. Yeah. This is something that has transformed my life. Sure. Like absolutely transformed my life. So the fixed mindset is this is who I am. It's carved in stone. I can't learn something new. It's just what it is. The growth mindset is it can be learned. It can be cultivated which means that you will fail, but then you'll succeed. You fail a little bit more, then you succeed. So it's set, so the fixed mindset is, I will always be at a level five confidence. It's just who I am, like I'll never be able to get 10. Growth mindset is, I'm at a level five, but I wanna get to level 10. So I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna grow, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna learn more, I'm gonna grow, and I'm gonna get there, because I know that it can be learned, okay? So these, um, different parts of your identity can be learned as well. So when you say, cause what my phrase used to be is I'm the worry wart. Sure. It's always going to happen. I'm always going to get migraines. I'm always going to have body pains. I'm always going to have anxious tension in my body. Until I heard about the fix and the growth mindset, it changed me a little bit. It showed me another side. So then I was like, you know what? F it, I'm gonna try these new ways. Like, because I was so deep in my own shit, I wanted to get out and I had no idea how to do it. So I was just trying things left and right. Sure. Right? So when I started to realize that, wait a minute, I'm not worrying about these things. I'm not stressing about these things that I used to stress about. I'm not feeling that like anxious tension in my body that I used to be. My identity was changing. So as soon as I was able to get out of that place of it's okay to leave that old identity behind, it's okay that I want something new for myself, then I was able to move through. So being honest with what you're feeling, being honest with what you want is your first step. Okay. Right? Being okay that you want that. Sure. Okay. Is great as well. So the feeling um we want to separate the feeling from the identity mm -hmm. okay? so you are not an anxious person you are feeling anxious you are a person who feels anxiety you are a person who feels stress you are a person who feels the worry 
okay? Sure. You want to separate those two so that you don't keep that identity in place, okay? So you keep asking yourself, why can't I release this stress? Why can't I just get over this depression? Why can't I blah, blah, blah? Check yourself at the identity level. And, and I know I said this in my post too, it's scary. Yeah, good time. It's scary to separate that self because that's who, that's the person you've been living in since you were two, three years old. That's all you know. So it's hard to really kind of step out of that place, right? And that's why I have so many um, clients who are afraid to step out of this place because who's going to be there? How are you going to know how to live? You only, you've known how to live with your anxiety forever, whether you like it or not, you know, that place it's comfortable. Yeah. So yes, it's scary, but if it's something that you want, be honest with yourself, remind yourself of the growth and fixed mindset and be patient with yourself because you're learning something new. You're learning new beliefs that you haven't even listened to or thought of in the past Five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Yeah, big time. Yeah, I like that. So let's recap action steps just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Step one would be recognize, and correct me if I'm wrong, of course. Step one would be recognizing that you are using that language, which is dictating your habits and your behaviors. Step two would be kind of giving yourself permission to be like, it's okay to not fill these shoes anymore. Like, I want to take things in a different direction. And then beyond that, the expectation and comfort of failing, knowing that it's not going to be like this linear progression where tomorrow I'm no longer an anxious person and I'm good to go. And would you add anything to that? Or are there any other specific action steps for like, okay, mentally I'm ready to go. Is there anything that after that you would say is really important? Give yourself five new qualities. Okay. Five new qualities of this new identity that you want to step into. Okay, I like that. So I want to be decision maker. I'm a decision maker. I want to be less stressed. Okay, don't say I want to be less stressed. Say I'm a peaceful person. Okay, you want to make sure that it comes from um, the positive side sure. of whatever it is you want, not the not stress. Okay. Okay, so give yourself five new qualities of this new identity. And you write them on a note card, on a sticky note, and you read them every single Love morning. That. Okay. So you know what to step into. That's the first thing you read. First thing you read in the morning. So you know, and I know it sounds silly, but it helps you know who to be. Oh yeah, I buy that for sure. Yeah. Now there was a, I don't know if it was at the conference that we met at, but it was a speaker I saw one time and he was talking about becoming a better leader. And he said to leave yourself a note where at the beginning of the day, it was really important as the beginning of the day, as you're mentioning, that you would say, what steps can I take today? It's just a prompt for yourself to become a better leader. And because it's the beginning of the day, I see everything through that lens of, to your point, if you're like, I want to be a better decision maker, I want to be a better leader. If that's the first thing I read in the morning, like as like silly and elementary as it may sound, I'm now going to enter my morning, my morning commute, my first meeting of the day, my first interaction with my kids through that lens rather than, you know, I'm a stressor, I am an anxious person or whatever. So I love that. I like that simple, effective action steps. Exactly, really exactly. And sometimes we don't do the simple things because they're simple. Yeah. I think it should be this huge mathematical twist and turn and like, it's too easy, it's not gonna work. Yeah. Just do it. I like that. Then at least for 90 days and just see how much yeah. it changes you. 90 days, yeah, I like that. Good, good specific benchmark, so. Five new identities almost that we want to step into that are on the positive side of things and then giving it like a three month period, expecting some level of failure, but moving forward anyway. Exactly. You're going to fail. And I don't know if there's anyone out there who is a perfectionist or a recovering perfectionist. Uh, yeah, we got some. Yeah. It's hard to decide because you don't know what's the right way, what's the best way, what's the fastest way. Just decide on these five qualities. Sure. Change them after 90 days. You will be changing. You will be evolving. Yeah. Start with five and just go with it. I love that. Cool. Okay. So to piggyback on the end of that question, in terms of action steps for feeling better and really diving deep into things that people can implement, one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about was how you started doing yoga and how you kind of added that to your weekly practice to like just feel a lot better and get moving and kind of get out of your own head. Because I can speak, I think, for a lot of people in the group, but at a minimum for myself, that it's almost like, I don't want to say intimidating, but 
the usual barrier, at least the perceived barrier for doing yoga is I have to go attend a one hour class, which like logistically may not make sense for my schedule. For me, it's really freaking hard to go through an hour. My shoulders are shaking. So I was curious to your thoughts and make a realistic approach to introducing yoga, not only for the physical benefits, but also your thoughts on the mental health benefits of doing yoga as well. So if you could dive into that, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah totally. Real quick, um, I used to make fun of yoga. Like, I, I, my mom tried it once and I was like, okay, cool. That ain't a workout. <laughs> I'm a tough guy. I do chin ups, I do pull ups, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, I had that tough guy mentality. I'm like, how is this going to really help me? Until I was in that moment that I talked to you guys about, like really feeling my identity crisis, fell into a depression. I found myself looking for anything, anything to just make me feel okay. Sure. I just wanted to be okay. You know, so many people talk about yoga. So many people say it's so amazing. So I was like, I'm just going to try. Like I was, I was really deep in my stuff this one day and I had a roommate who was willing to go with me me and I was like I just need to go it freed me I was emotional I was a blubbering little kid that <laughs> all these emotions just yeah. really came up and, and, I, and I left there lighter I left there more free and I really understood why people actually go to yoga I don't do it for a workout I don't um, and some people think like, okay, you were a gymnast, you're flexible. Um, I'm not that flexible. <laughs> I'm really not. You think you should be, and you think you should be a coordinated gymnast, but not everyone. <laughs> but it's not about the flexibility. And sometimes it's not even about the workout. Okay. Sometimes hot yoga or like an hour and a half. Yeah. That's a workout. Great. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes I do a 10 minute stretch. Sometimes I'll put on YouTube and do a 20 minute yoga um flow or whatever it's called sure yeah but it has done so much mental work on me it is life-changing it is transformational so if you shift your mindset from this ain't a workout for me yeah to, this builds my mental strength because you do have to remember your physical body gets strong you have to work it out your mind has to get strong have to work it out okay it does the same thing so what yoga does for me meditation breathing it keeps me in the present moment which is really hard and actually kind of scary to do if you sure. have anxiety because your mind is non non-stop your mind is going you have to think of the next thing you have to do right you have to think of it. yoga forces you to be present forces you to be with yourself and that was something that i needed sure yeah i needed to bring the love back in myself i need to, to bring the acceptance back into myself and that's what yoga has taught me and i do not do yoga every day and i don't do it ritually but okay. i do it two three times a week Okay. To really just remind myself of the present moment and feel yeah. that gratitude and love towards myself so that I never fall back into that place that I was in. Yeah, I like that a lot. Follow up question for you. I relate to what you're saying a lot in that when you're doing yoga, like in the back of my mind, I'm like, uh, I still have to, still not have to get to. Yeah, yeah. seconds later i still have, I haven't got my workout done i haven't prepped food like i'm thinking or i haven't didn't finish before the class like i'm thinking of so many things that aren't yoga aren't my body position aren't breathing and it sounds like that's what you experienced early on so is there anything that you were able to do that allowed you to get more present and like focus in your breathing focus in the body position and get more out of the class from like a mental health standpoint like what allowed you to make that switch and kind of actually dial in a little bit more totally before you even step into the room, step into the studio, you tell yourself, I set aside this time for yoga. Okay. I put in this time into my schedule for a reason. I like that. Okay. Okay. So I love brain dumps. If you need to really get your stuff out of your head, 
before you go to yoga, you brain dump. Every, I need to do this. I need to do this. Da, 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 anything that's in your head. Okay. I need to pick my nose later. I need to make sure I get toilet paper. I need to, like, whatever comes through your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Write it all down. Okay. okay. And then before you step into that studio, you tell yourself, I already put this time in place. I'm okay with letting go of the thoughts. I'm okay putting my place in this moment and being in the moment and not worrying about anything else I okay. put for myself. Yeah. Okay. I like those. I, I love action steps. That's perfect. We could definitely use those. So scheduling in advance. So it doesn't feel like a haphazard last minute thing. And then I love the brain dump because a lot of times one of the things I go over in this group is improving sleep as everybody can vouch for and people who like their wheels are turning before bed. I always give the example of, Oh, like do a brain dump. Write down pen and paper, not phone, pen and paper, actually get it down because otherwise your passive mind is going to work on it. But I've never thought to do that before yoga class. And it's the same exact principle. So I love that strategy. Yeah. Um, one last yoga question for you, though. Say somebody doesn't go to a gym or they're like me and they don't want to sit through an hour class. Like, are there any like quick, you know, five minute, 15 minute, like 10 minute strategies that you have for somebody with a busy schedule or doesn't feel comfortable with an hour class like me to kind of like just get your foot in the door without going like full namaste, like three hours a week? Like, yeah, yeah um, YouTube. Okay. Like plain and simple, I type in 15 minute yoga session. Okay. 20 minute yoga session. All you need to do is get your body stretching longer than it is just sitting there. Yeah. Moving your body in different ways, different places that you haven't been. Okay. Because we hold, and we can get into this later or another video, but we hold emotion in our bodies. Sure. Especially women, we hold stress in our hips and lower back. For sure. Yeah. So that's why I say open that up, release those emotions, and it's amazing what you will feel. But really, YouTube is your best friend. Okay. Nothing okay. is. The best one is just just do it. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Here I am looking for a complex answer when there's a simple solution. So I love that straight to <laughs> Yeah. Um, so to recap, action steps for yoga: scheduling in advance, making sure there's like a non-negotiable Thursday from 5 p.m. to 5:10 p.m. On top of that, um, the brain dump beforehand, which will allow you to be more present and get more mental health benefits. And then finally. Um, matching your willingness to commit so if you do feel up for one hour schedule that if not and you're like me and you're a little lazy or scared about it you could do 10 minutes on youtube and that does the trick exactly set it up in your own room without anybody there whatever and just do your thing and again be patient with yourself if, okay. you're, if you're new at this like okay Sure. No, I like that. Cool. So one last topic that I did want to dive into a little bit, because I think a lot of this, I, I know a lot of myself, our members are guilty of doing it, not only health and fitness, but just in general. And that's negative self-talk and self-limiting beliefs and like getting really down on yourself, whether it is like, oh, I didn't do all well my diet this weekend, or it's like, I didn't perform well at my job today. And then my mom actually asked a really good question, which was for specific to this subject, any little tips or strategies? Like if we go super action step here, like super all in about, okay, I'm having a tough morning at work. Like me and my boss aren't getting along and I just feel like so down about myself, about my job performance, but I want something to feel better. Do you have any strategies for kind of getting out of your own head on like a micro level, like in the moment and feeling better right away? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to break that up into two. Let's do it. Sure. And I'm going to talk about the negative self-talk and then I'm going to talk about the, um, Second question, but yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's perfect. So for negative self-talk, um, number one thing is don't push it away. Okay. Don't push it away. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Don't think about it. Don't stop. Like not right now. No, no, no. Okay. You've been doing that for years. So when are you gonna uh gonna allow it to come up and finally get out of your head? Okay. okay. Now what you wanna do and you're going to have to do this quite a few times, okay? You want to meet with it face-to-face. -face. Say the whole entire sentence, the, the whole negative sentence, say it. And, like, visually see it in front of you, okay? You want to meet with that negativity face-to-face. -face, and you want to understand where it came from, okay. okay? You want to understand where it came from. And then, because chances are that negativity, that voice, might not be your voice. 
It might be a learned voice from a parent, from an old coach, from a teammate, from a best friend who betrayed you back in second grade. <laughs> I know this sounds so silly, but this- No, that makes sense. It's, yeah. it's, learned, it's learned from somewhere. Okay, so you want to ask yourself, is that actually my voice? Is that, or did I learn that from someone else? Okay, so this negativity, it's always learned. So something that you can take with you and how to release this, meet with a face-to-face. And then also I want you to picture a little girl, a daughter, a five-year-old daughter, niece, neighbor, whatever, like visually picture her. Whatever you just said to yourself, I want you to say that to that little girl. Visually. <laughs> feel like yeah, right? <laughs> like, <"Uh-oh." laughs> I would never say that. No. So why would you say that to yourself? Because chances are you're yelling at that little girl who you used to be. Okay? You're, you're scolding her and she's not going to do the right thing. She's not going to help you move forward if you keep bashing her. Okay. So say that to that little girl and then you're going to say this phrase, this sentence to yourself. Okay. You're going to say, Thank you, negativity. I understand you. You no longer serve me. Because that negativity was in place to try and protect you, to try to save you from something. Sure. Okay? But it no longer serves you. It keeps you stuck and it keeps you anxious. Okay? So say it. Meet with that negativity face-to-face. Do not push it away. I love that. Okay. Say it to the little girl. You know the cringe. <laughs> exactly. And then say the phrase to yourself, thank you. I see you. I, I know what you're trying to do, but I no longer need you. I no longer serve me. Okay, for sure. And I want to pause there for a second because I feel like that last part, that personal mantra, could get lost in the shuffle for some people, similar to like the brain dump, where it almost seems so simple, it's borderline ineffective. So I do want to double down and make sure that everybody listening to this is willing to give that a shot because as we talked about a million times in the group, your language really does shape your thoughts, which eventually shape your behaviors. Like you can't control your initial thought, but you can control your reaction to it. So that's my only thing is I want to make sure that everybody who's listening to this actually takes that third part seriously. And even if it's not that exact mantra, something for you that allows you to, along the lines of what you said, like I see you, I recognize this is happening, but you're not doing it for me anymore. Um, which kind of leads us to the second part, my mom's question, action steps. Okay, I've recognized this negativity, I've owned it, which I love that because I've never actually heard that before to like, all right, let's face it, like one-on-one. And you're like, okay, but I'm ready to do something to feel better. So maybe you felt, again, let's use the work example. You and your boss maybe aren't clicking and you feel down about your work performance, but then you realize, wait a minute, this is learned negativity from an old boss who made me believe I wasn't good at my job. Now I feel like stressed and anxious, but I'm ready to break out of it. In that moment, say you're having a tough morning at work, what are some strategies that you can use to get at least a little bit of relief to kind of get you through the day? That way you don't shock up and be like, all right, well, it's a Monday and like lose the whole day. Like, what was yeah, your yeah. Exactly. And that's just to give you like a little metaphor. I don't know if you've heard, but like that negativity is, is just like uh, you drop your phone, phone and you get a scratch on it. And you're like, oh, shit. Do you keep smashing it and smashing it <laughs> and smashing it? Because... Nope. <laughs> F it, like it already has one scratch. I'm just going to ruin the whole rest of the phone. No, you don't need to do that with, with the rest of your day. So number one, I would say is breathe. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to do four rounds okay. of breathe in for four seconds. You're going to hold it for seven seconds. You're going to breathe out for eight seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. Do that for four rounds. That calms the nervous system, okay. which calms the mind, calms the brain, calms... You want to get oxygen to the brain because what you're doing right now when you're so pissed and you're frustrated is you, you're, cu- you're actually cutting off oxygen going to your brain. So you want to bring that back in. You want a clearer vision okay. of what you actually want to do next. Okay? That's four, seven, eight. Yep, four, seven, eight. Got it. Okay. Exactly. You're going to do that. And then if you want to go further, you ask yourself, am I in control of the situation or am I not in control of the situation? Okay. Am I not in control of the situation? As in uh, someone parked in my spot. And I'm so freaking pissed. Like, this always happens, blah, blah, blah. Like, are you in control of the situation or are you not in control of the situation? If you're not in control of the situation, let it be. The stress is not helping you get what you want. Okay. If you are in control of the situation, what are the steps for you to get what you want? Okay. Don't call the person that, who's in your spot. 
you know, put a cone by your spot, you know, and then make sure. it. No, no, that's a good example. Yeah, and I, yeah, taking action. Yeah, I like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. really ask yourself because sometimes we hold on to stress to um, make it seem like or make it feel like we care more. Sure, that makes sense. Which it just hurts us. Yeah, oh, I like that. I specifically like the breathing strategy. And again, I kind of theme this conversation. I almost feel like for a lot of people that's so simple, it seems like ineffective. But my challenge to anybody whose initial thought is like, all right, like that simple, is the next time you're feeling stressed, to pay attention to three things. One, that your shoulders are closer to your ears. Yeah. Two, that you're breathing into your chest, not your belly. And three, and this one's actually recently new to me, but now I'm catching it all the time, that my tongue is pressed to the roof of my mouth, like super hard. Like, I don't realize that. The roof of the mouth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, because I, like, two, like two years ago, when I really like went through this whole thing and like released everything of the stress, I, and this is how migraines start, is by the tongue, clenching the jaw, the jaw going to the temple. That's interesting. Okay, I don't know that part all tension things so i'm so happy you said that sam because it is so weird how and you guys breathe and then check your tongue yeah. like <laughs> no, so breathe and check your tongue yeah. like, if that's all you get out of this <laughs> check your tongue <laughs> check your tongue it is so weird how what what it does but it's just a protective mechanism yeah i know what's funny is i bet two-thirds of the people listening to this the second we just said that, are going to be pulling their tongue off of the roof of their mouth when they did that. I know. Like, that's how gonna I, know. Um, I know. It's it's so funny how much you don't realize, but your body and your mind are connected. Your body yeah. is connected to your stress, to your overwhelm, to your anxiousness, and that, that body, your mind will. Yeah, I love that. Okay, cool. So to recap, action steps for this last part in terms of getting out of your own head, it was kind of twofold. So in terms of the big picture stuff. Embracing the negativity, not pushing away for once, looking at it head on, looking at, okay, is maybe this something that I've learned? Is this something that I would say to somebody else, five-year-old girl? Definitely not. Why well, say it to myself? Like, keep a high standard for yourself. And then moving on to the action step associated with that in terms of tackling it. The four, seven, eight breathing method, is that what it was? Yep. Four, four seven, seven, eight. eight. Um, and then from there, paying attention to, and this is what I'm throwing on, on top of it. Shoulders yeah. down away from your ears, belly breath, and then check your tongue. That's the last part. Because that makes a surprising difference. Like it's like shocking how often like you get a text that makes you feel uncomfortable or stresses you out a bit and you're reading it and you're like, you're locked in. Yeah. Like that's huge. Um, yeah. that's fantastic. Um, so as a whole, these were the three main things I wanted to talk to you about. First, feelings versus identity. Second was a little intro to yoga. And then third was kind of how to get out of your own head, how to stop being negative, and then to get a little temporary, and then eventually long-term relief. And I feel as though we, and by we, I mostly mean you, did an awesome job touching upon all that. Is there anything else that you want to add, or you feel like we kind of covered those main topics? I think we covered a lot. You know, there's a lot more in detail and depth that we can go to, because the work that I do, I, I dig for the root. Sure, yeah. Now, instead of just picking the weed off the top, so yeah. that this never returns ever again. But the stuff that we talked about is like awesome stuff to get started with. Yeah. And uh, all you women, and Sam, let me know if anybody has questions. Like, I'm an open book. You let me know anything. Yeah. I'll help you guys with, with whatever you want. Um, but, you know, just make sure you check yourself when you say, it's, it's just who I am. Sure. It's what I do. Can't change it. Yeah, I like that. When you can. That is amazing. You are amazing. Thank you so much for being on this. Thank you, Natalie. So what I'm going to have us do then, uh, as soon as we wrap this up, I will post the recording tomorrow for everybody to check out. And as you, we talked about a little, this is a lot of big picture stuff. We did talk some action steps, but if there's one thing that I feel like our members are like, let's dive like all in on this identity portion or all in on the yoga, we could always have you back in the group if you want to come back in and we could dive deeper into like anything that we feel like is most valuable and kind of take it from there. Anything. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you again. This was fantastic. I will let you know everybody's feedback. You're welcome. All right, stop recording.